Hello and welcome to another episode of the Equine Partnered Academy podcast. I have one of my EPA girls here, Sam. She is a master practitioner. She completed her master's in September, so only about a month ago, or no, full completion of her course, sorry. Her master practitioner training was back in May, wasn't it, Sam? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so warmest of welcomes, and I cannot wait to bring this episode and share all the things with you guys. So welcome, Sam. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for our chat. (laughs) Okay, so I would love for you to begin just as a bit of an opening for everybody. Your journey with horses, like how it began, like did you grow up with horses and sort of like the evolution and the unfolding of the journey for you to then step into the EPA side because there's always, you know, a bit of an unfolding before we get to that point. Yeah, definitely. Um, I didn't grow up with horses uh, as a child, um, but I was always interested in them and I had uh, lessons at my local, um, yeah, horse riding club and, um, yeah, we were never allowed to have them where we lived, but I was always loved them. And, um, yeah, I sort of dropped out of horses as a teenager. Um, you know, friends and things become more <laughs> important. <laughs> and, and, yeah, I'm trying to think how old I was now, but I was, yeah, as a working adult, um, I just decided, yeah, I'm, I want to get back into horses. And I um, landed myself a little pony after having a couple of lessons Um elsewhere I was like no nah, I think I'm going to look for my own and um it's a funny story actually because this little pony who's now like everyone knows her as my heart pony she's just <laughs> amazing um <laughs> she actually sold to somebody else and um I ended up bringing the lady I didn't know and I said oh I'm interested in the little pony and she's like oh sorry she's sold so sort of forgot about that one kept looking I got this call two weeks later and um she said oh this the lady never paid I'm going to pick her up are you still interested and I said yeah anyway so we went to look and you know she yeah she wasn't what I was looking for in terms of where she was at but there was something about her I was like she's getting on a float she's coming home with me and um yeah that just opened my whole adulthood um horse journey I suppose and I went down lots of different paths that we definitely don't have time for today but um yeah sort of um, I was doing some competing and really just landed myself where I really wasn't enjoying enjoying this ho- little horse anymore and nothing felt good. Um, you know, I definitely did some things that now I think, oh, what were you thinking, girl? Like if you knew what you know now, um, yeah. you know, which I think a lot of mainstream equestrians are are guilty of doing it especially when they have that realization that Mm. um horses are so much more than um what we think they are when we're in that mindset Mm. um and yeah there was just something about this little horse and she's still by my side today leading me down this amazing path and we've got a really cool story since um I started the EPA with her in terms of her health and um Mm, yeah we'll have to touch (laughs) after as well that's a really good one I didn't have that one written down but we'll definitely definitely go into that one because that's really yeah that's an awesome story and I think as well like so many of us we go straight into that mainstream riding school environment and all we see in flash advertising around horses is competing and you know really you know pedestalling the competition side of the world and going you know that's how it's meant to be and then that's right and almost that like you'll do anything to get there and it's yeah <laughs> yeah 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 and then we have this point where we're like oh it's actually not fulfilling like we've won the ribbons because I think like I've seen a few photos of her and you'd like cross country or jumping and things like that um competing and you know like my myself as well I remember going through all of that and I'm like no like there's something more but in that in that awakening is also that like you say the guilt and having to honor that version of you that just couldn't see through that veil that was the conditioning of you know what we thought and we got taught was the way and the only way 
but it's the gateway then into, oh, this is how it feels and what I was actually seeking. We've really got to like experience that whole side of things to then go, oh, that feels so much better than that. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. And it's <laughs> sometimes I think we we want to look on that other side and then it, it just gets really overwhelming and a lot of people like will draw back and be like, no, this is just what I know. Um, so really being able to trust and just, you know, now I am not where I could have even imagined. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good point. It's, you know, and that's our unconscious and our ego wanting to keep us safe, safe, stay in the comfortable, stay with what you know, stay with what's been familiar. And then you go to step out and they're like, oh, are you sure? But on the other side of that is all of that fulfillment and abundance and all the things that you've been searching for. So mm, amazing. I think that is a beautiful intro heading into what we're going to speak about. So you uh, got on a call with me. It would have been maybe June, July 2022, I reckon. And, yeah, initiated this whole big evolution of EPA. Um, I'll never forget having that conversation. I remember where I, where I was, the words that were shared and... Um, yeah, the feeling in my body when I was like, oh, okay, I need to like fully respond to this. Obviously me being manifesting generator, you know, the world will come to me. So when someone comes to me with something and then my full body goes, yes, go, go, go. Um, yeah, it was freaking, it was awesome. Um, so I'd love for you to share where you were at and what you were seeking um, before you started the EPA journey. And then we can head into fundamentals. Sure. So I had returned to work. My daughter was six months old and I was the most depressed I've ever been in my whole life. I actually didn't want to live anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had, so I got through that to some level. Yeah. I had my second born and I was adamant. I was like, I am not going back. That is it. I'm no. And, um, Anyway, I remember hanging out the washing and I was like, maybe I'm just meant to be this stay at home mum. Like I'm, I am fulfilled, but my soul was like, there is more, there is more. Um, I remember hanging out the washing and I was just like, no, nah, I can't just be a stay at home mum. Like I love it, but I just knew there was something else. And anyway, I was taking my two daughters to um, this beautiful community um, play group and the lady that runs it, we um, ended up being, end up being really good friends. And she um, is a bit of a coach as well and she was like well I think I know what you want to do and I just looked at her <laughs> like tell me um, and she's like she sort of dropped you know dropped that in that little seed and I was like oh you know and then I thought about the conversations I'd had just with those few people and um, she's like well I think it's something to do with like spirituality and horses and the penny freaking dropped <laughs> I was like right my whole soul just lit up and I was like what these two worlds that I have that are separate right now, you're telling me they can come together. Oh. And I was like searching. I was like, no, nah, this exists. Like, what is this? And, you know, having had on my healing journey, just completely separate to horses though, you know, I've had the readings, the Reiki, you know, quite a spiritual person, but totally separated in some sense with horses. And yeah, so I got searching and then, yeah, I came across you and I was like, I need to talk to this lady. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah so that's where I was I just I knew that there was more and that like my soul wanted more and I knew that yeah I just had to keep following mm. those little breadcrumbs yeah definitely yeah and I remember that and I was like oh yeah I'll you know chuck a post up and we'll you know see what comes of it we had freaking this epic response to it I, I remember it so clearly and uh yeah then we formed beautiful EPA group one uh with yeah, five five other women uh, that joined you on the journey, and then we had our fundamentals weekend at the first weekend of September twenty twenty two. So it all happened and formed and got created within yeah a very short amount of time. And you know, I had been at that time again. It was there was so many parts that I was doing. <clears throat> I was doing like women's coaching, horse stuff. And, you know, then I was on my own spiritual journey and it was all separate. And then all of yeah. a sudden it all just started to form into the one. 
Um, and then, yeah, I'd already done like quite a lot of master classes and this, and then it just all all came together. So we were on similar but but different paths. And um, yeah, I'd really love for you to share. I know as soon as that sort of occurred, things already started shifting and moving, heading into fundamentals. So I'd love for you to share uh, what I mentioned before at the start of our call, um, that very pivotal experience that happened at Fundamentals. Uh, but yeah, I'd love for you to share, you know, maybe what was coming into Fundamentals for you and yeah, then leading into that weekend because that weekend was powerful for everyone. I was moving through my own shifts and yeah, everyone went went super deep. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was amazing. I was definitely excited to really do that face-to-face -face, um, part of the the course and um yeah I uh, hadn't I don't remember how long it had been since I had had um say like a Reiki session or something like that um I was on my healing journey but I wasn't actively like setting yeah. set doing things um but we did a bit of was it a bit of a table share I think we might have done at um the weekend yeah and, yeah you volunteered sorry. the demo yeah Yes, yes, yeah, my demo yeah. is inside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you gave me um, a table uh, Reiki as well, energy healing, and um, things are already moving around, um, just sort of aligning themselves, and I was seeing a lot of signs, and I just knew that I was in the right place. Um, but I was still breastfeeding my uh, second daughter, and I hadn't um, had a... Uh, cycle return and I know that you've got a great master class on um where you touch on all of your cycles and um all of that and I was sort of like oh I really want to use that to my advantage and like start to feel into these um parts of um the cycle we experience and um I sort of felt like you sort of have them but they're a little bit more suppressed I feel when you're not having a natural bleed and a release yeah. um but yeah so we had the fundamentals weekend and then two weeks later I had um I got my first cycle since having my daughter and she was over a year and a half old so it was quite a long time since I had experienced the cycle um mm. so it was so powerful it just showed um yeah, the power really of of what you know this work and um then the story keeps evolving and I actually ended up conceiving um my third child mm -hmm. I think after one after that cycle or maybe one more um I can't remember now I'd have to look at dates but um yeah just while this little baby was like I'm coming I'm coming on this journey with you um so yeah 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 my heart's just bursted open so beautiful I love I love that story I remember when you messaged I think it was inside the group chat or maybe you messaged me personally I can't remember but yeah, that that in itself, there's so much I could probably do an entire podcast on cycles, moons, what I've learned about the womb space, you know, um, having my own miscarriages prior to SAGE and then having some post-SAGE as well uh, and really understanding how our trauma as women lives in the womb space. And I remember that table session and it's actually for anyone that joins inside the practitioner or the master practitioner, we've still got that demo. Uh, it's literally a 20 minute demo and it is so powerful. We go so deep. It's all around, um, you know, realigning Sam's feminine and masculine side and, you know, a bit of ancestral lineage stuff and, really working with our chakras and all of those sort of things. Like it's so, so powerful. Um, yeah. So, and, and, you know, that experience for you is now a beautiful rippling and a beautiful offering to all that are going to join EPA in the future. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because I got the first bleed on the full moon. Um, and then that particular full moon was all about like, yeah, self-actualization and healing. And it, yeah, it was just the depth of it at the time was just incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's a large component in there of, you know, how to really utilise the, you know, everyone's wanting to understand manifestation and this, that, and the other. Like it's different for everyone, but the minute that we tap into the new moon, the full moon, and they come around so fast. 
they you know, do. We, we follow them a lot inside of EPA and, you know, in our group chats and coaching calls and things. And I'm very onto it and intention setting uh, around those times so that we can fully utilize what, you know, the feminine, the earth, okay, the masculine is the sun, the feminine is the earth. So she's connected to the moons, you know, all the things. And, you know, in that, we can then, when we're releasing, we can release all of the things to then create the space. And this is why so many women in EPA, you know, have such massive shifts and movements so fast because the minute we get in sync with, you know, the universe and the earth, all the elements as we're meant to as the feminine, boom, we snap straight into cracking into abundance, which is what everyone wants, abundance and freedom. And I remember me, you know, back when I was younger and I first started getting my cycle and I talk a lot about this in in the program is I was like it's a burden oh my gosh like you just you know I had um you know quite a lot of troubles with it especially in my teen years so I had to it was like I had to have a bit of a week off because it was just a bit of a a bit of a mess um yeah you wish it away yeah, yeah. I was like pushing it away, which was making it even more intense. And yeah, there's there's so much in that. I'm, I'm not going to go too much into it because I am aware that we're already half an hour in and I want to continue with your story, but maybe that's a story um, for another time. But yeah, just for those out there listening, just slowly just tap into the moons and, you know, see where your cycles are at. And, you know, the women I've been that have been coming into my vortex recently, the amount of women that have PCOS and endometriosis, all of those sort of things, like it's all in relation to the relationship within the blueprint that we got passed down, feminine and masculine, womb space, womb healing, past relationships, still being in amongst that energetic field. Like this is all the work that we do. You know, it's it's such powerful stuff. Yes, we do. The Reiki side of things, but there's so much weaved in, which, which you know, Sam, um, you know, and all of the practitioners and master practitioners, they're all, you know, trained in all of these areas. So yeah, I think that leading out of fundamentals, and then obviously you conceiving your beautiful little little man who is now here earthbound who's been been here through the whole EPA journey I'd love for you to share um the journey then from that happening and then moving into our practitioners weekend because that practitioners weekend was huge (laughs) so that was heading into November 2022 um yeah so what sort of evolved and happened from there uh with you Um, I think, yeah, it's just like follows on with that clearing out and just getting you that little bit closer to abundance, a little bit, and you get a little taste and then it's like, okay, what else is here? Like what else is mine? And there's so many shifts in movement and just, yeah, just I think the embodiment and then you just just did the whole journey Um, and then coming up to practitioners, it was just like to land yourself there ready for that, if that makes sense. Yeah, creating um, space for, for your clients to be able to come in, you know, like really yeah. getting, you said like what's mine, it's like we were clearing all of the parts that weren't actually your innate blueprint but we pick up from being earthbound, from, you know, people around us and all of those things. That's just the unconscious mind, yeah. Um, yeah, and then um, for me one of the biggest things was um like self-doubt and those limiting beliefs and um, really like landing myself in um, surrender and trust. And I think that really um, was sort of needed on that week on that for that weekend and stepping into practitioners is um, yeah, moving through, moving through that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, self-doubt, well, and that's the, the sort of theme of, of practitioners is you're now going to be heading out, you're going to be speaking your, you know, your truth, your soul essence, which, you know, we've just cleared all the things out of the way and now it's stepping in and, you know, honouring self and stepping into your true self, which has been there the whole time, trying to sort of make its way through the muddy water. But now mm-hmm. you're there and it's like, okay, now this feels a little bit strange. I don't have quite have the confidence. I'm not used to this. 
because I'm used to operating with all of those other parts that weren't me. And then now I'm stepping into that. And it's like, ooh, but it didn't take you long, did it? <laughs> so then no, coming yeah. out of practitioners. Coming out of practitioners. Yeah, that again, like keeps of integration and um yeah, just feeling out what I wanted it look to look like for me and um everyone's journey is so individual and mm. what you know, I think you really um help us to embody like what's good for us, what feels good for you, because it's not it's not a like everyone's doing this. It's mm. like what do, what lights you up and um yeah, just like finding that and finding that on your own is like almost putting all the tools to to work if that makes sense um yeah yeah so um yeah went down you know launching launching a bit of um some offerings and um yeah getting a feel for what I really really liked um mm. which is a bit of a mix <laughs> yeah 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 you you have some incredible offerings you sort of like really went on <clears throat> to do the weave of all of them Uh, and I know that you had some really profound uh, experiences and clients come in uh, straight after that Uh, especially after your case studies you had some some really incredible case studies and then yeah went on to a bit of online bit of face-to-face do you want to share share sort of a little bit what you sort of got a bit of a taste for before baby came along (laughs) yeah so I did some face-to-face um horse with owner um healings I did some distant communications um like horses a few dogs um Mm -hmm. I ended up doing some uh if you want to call them entity removals which was um a huge shift uh for me just fully Mm -hmm. trusting and um yeah and then what else have we got yeah the hands-on healing and um some hands-on healing for people as well um Mm -hmm. And then just weaving in all of it, that it sort of all just came through as as one. And I thought, okay, we're going to roll with this. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you, um, I'd love you to touch on as well, like the branding side, like you, everyone, go check out Sam's socials because her branding <laughs> is freaking beautiful. Um, you know, there's a program inside uh, of EPA that I do, which is social media magic. And we, we go on about, you know, all of the branding and you've, I don't know, you've just taken it like duck to water anyway. <laughs> um, but the, yeah, your branding is just on point. It's beautiful. And it's such an expression of you. And again, like you say before, that's the theme of everything inside of EPA. I'm coming in and going, what feels good for you? Because for me, you know, I'm the embodiment. I won't do anything that doesn't feel good for me. You know, the last couple of weeks um, of what all has evolved for me. And as soon as something doesn't feel right for me, I shift and I shift really quickly because I don't, I can't, it will literally kill me <laughs> energetically, emotionally, physically, if I'm doing something that does not light me up, you know, and I think, we're, we are conditioned that, you know, you were just a lawyer or just this, but, you know, we as women, we're meant to be those multi, you know, multi weavers of all of our magic and, you know, what inspires us, what it makes us feel good. And that's what lights us up. Yeah, that program's amazing because it really was like, who are you? What represents you? And it really, um, I thought I was going to hate that side of it. I was like, oh, <laughs> creativity it's just not it was just like it's just not me but when you can actually make it so authentic to you it's yeah. it's an expression of you and yeah like we got we get on the little program where we can um create things and I love it I love it because I'm like yeah all the earthy browns and you know yeah, yeah it's yeah. you it's not like here's your little template you know it's like go and be you and it's yeah that's a really good program to mm. um really align yourself with who you are, what you're offering and and um, what you want to look like. Yeah, yeah. And the ecosystem is the, you know, the foundation of that. It really gets you connected to you, connected to what seeds you want to plant and, you know, mm-hmm. all of those. And that's, you know, that's what the womb space is. Like when we can fully tap into our womb space and reclaim it with the process that we did, you know, um, early on in the journey, then you can get your creativity lit. But if we are going into environments or are in environments at home, with our relationships, all areas, 
that's what we cover self-development business and you know home environment relationships if all of those areas you're going in and you're having to put all of this armor on and it doesn't light you up of course we can't tap into creativity of course we can't have that full energy you know flowing within us so we've got to clear all of that out and then we go, oh, I didn't know we were going this way. And then it gets really exciting and fun. You know, we do that inner child work and the inner child gets to shine through and go, oh, I like that, and this, and this, and this, and permission to change. Yeah, and it feels so good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from practitioners, then heading into masters. Masters was one of the most incredible. I might as well have been a puddle on the floor. Um, it was super <laughs> emotional for me as well, Masters, because it was like a full circle of the whole creation that had unfolded. And yeah, it was freaking beautiful. So I'd love for you to share your experience with Masters. Masters. Yeah, I think um, but Masters for me um, was really uh, feeling safe in the embodiment um, mm-hmm. and really getting to a point where for me I could take one step forward and almost like be the student and receive and then also being able to take that one step backwards and and hold and like say let's just from a horse's perspective say um, you know I could step towards that horse and um, they could offer me the healing and then I could take that step back and then I could also hold them and being able to like the duality of both. Um, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing that I noticed in myself was, um, yeah, that, that energetic, um, yeah, coming together, I think is what yeah, I'm trying yeah, to say. Coming it's together like, and yeah. the, the intention being able to just shift to being like, I'm going to hold the space for you and now I'm going to, I I need to hold the space for me. And that's all part of the beauty of the work. You know, we can't go out and be practitioners and just be like pouring ourselves at everyone without knowing how to step back and being able to receive ourselves or being able to go, Hey, I need, you know, I need a mentor to come and hold me for a little bit, you know, like I've still got all of my mentors in multiple different areas that I, I lean on you know um and that's the the beauty of of this work like everyone holds everyone and everyone has someone that holds them yeah yeah Mm. definitely yeah yeah and I think masters as well is just this beautiful completion and coming together of you know we started the journey with parts that weren't you (laughs) you know what you said mine parts that weren't mine and then you know had that self-doubt and then it's that real standing and honouring in the embodiment, in your power of like, this is who I am and I know I can attract all the people that I'm meant to. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, obviously you had a beautiful little boy because you were you were very pregnant at Masters. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then you welcomed this beautiful little boy into the world and then we had our closing ceremony uh, in September and he, he joined us. And, he uh, did join us. <laughs> he did, he did. And, yeah, I'd love for you to share sort of where you're at right now of, you know, the newborn bubble and then, you know, stepping into the business and that, you know, that little bit of a, a juggle between the both but, you know, honouring both sides that your space is, you're holding so much space of where it needs to be right now. Yeah, so um, obviously I was well and truly on this and committed to this journey before um, conceiving little baby three. Um, So I think all of this work over um, the EPA journey has just landed me in an amazing space where I've had this little baby now and although I am itching because this work lights up my soul and, you know, I want to get out there and get my hands on, I know how precious this time is with this baby um, and really giving myself full permission to know that I'm exactly where I need to be. And when I feel called to um, step into the business more, I will. And um, I think 
that for me is huge because before I would have had all this mental pressure on myself, like, no, you need to be doing this. And it's really that the, none of those were my beliefs in the beginning anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, really sitting in a bit of a sweet spot where um, I know that that is there and I also know that I need to be here with this baby at this precious, precious time as well. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, having that opportunity to do a little bit of online stuff if you need to, um, you know, if you feel called to, you know, you can obviously. Yeah, so I've recently enough. felt a little bit called to, so I have released some online offerings um, because that is what I have space for right now. And mm. um, I think that works beautifully with um, also being there for my children and my um my son and I know that um the power of the online work as well um just as profound as getting out there and getting your hands on as well yeah 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 beautiful absolutely beautiful I think as well you know it's that feeling of abundance like you know you're in that feeling of abundance when you can hold space to that and you know that you can step into the business and everything's just going to magnetize to you when you step in. It's not like I have to keep posting to keep this business going and this, that, and the other. It's just like I'm here and I know that when I'm called, I can just step in, in, in that door whenever I need to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think fully trusting as well, um, like from a practitioner's point of view, that, yeah, you sort of get to this, well, I have got to this point where I know that, um yeah it is so aligned that I can just step into it and completely surrender to it and it will work out exactly how it's supposed to yeah and everything's always going to be okay and everything is always perfect even when it feels freaking real messy (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah that's amazing beautiful well I think um that is an awesome coming together and you know a sort of close close off for today is there anything that you would love to add um and share with the listeners out there before we share all of your social media stuff um no nothing really really comes to mind I think just if you are considering doing EPA it is the most profound self-development journey you will ever ever go on regardless of what you pitch yourself to be at the end um yeah I just think if it lights something up and you just um is if it's a bit of interest to you follow the breadcrumbs because I didn't know that this is what it was going to look like I just kept (laughs) following that next breadcrumb and um yeah I am living in absolute alignment so that would be a little um ad (laughs) yeah beautiful I love it thank you for sharing that so Sam has a few um socials that you guys can follow as well um you know she provides a lot of value and shares beautiful wisdom and energy on her socials. So you've got uh, Facebook and Instagram, don't you? So we'll pop the the links below and, you know, Sam's got a few offerings and things that she uh, has as well. So you can follow her page. And if you feel called, if Sam feels like your practitioner, you can jump in with her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, joining us today. And I'm sure that, yeah, in another six months or so, we will do another <laughs> one and it will be freaking epic because, yeah, we have lots in the pipeline for the next next little bit of time, don't we? Yes, yes, so exciting. Thank you so much for having me on. You're most welcome. All right, thank you, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.